We're moving along very nicely with North Korea. We'll see what happens. Certainly, the rhetoric has calmed down just a little bit, would you say? Some experts are expressing concern that Kim might have a very different understanding of what denuclearization entails than Trump and U.S. negotiators. Douglas Paul said each side should make its expectations clear. It, they should be on the table for the summit and they should be on the table before the summit when preparations are being made because you don't want to, you know, preferably you don't want a president to walk into a meeting that will be automatically a disaster because the the understanding of the purpose of the meeting is so far apart. But even with all the concerns about a summit, the outgoing United Nations political chief says this situation is a lot better than the extremely high tensions over North Korea just months ago. It's now been four months since there's been any kind of, of military test like this. That's not the same as denuclearization. Um, but it, it means that instead of having tensions continue to rise to at an alarming pace leading to who knows what, instead we have um, a scenario by which various parties are, tr are talking about getting together um, at various levels to see if there's a way forward that would be consistent with the Security Council resolution calls for peaceful denuclearization. Feltman said he hoped the upcoming summits would be the start of a lengthy process toward nuclear non-proliferation in the region. Um, North Korea, at least as far as we know, has not acknowledged the summit, but we're all talking about it here in the U.S. What do you make of the fact that it has not been acknowledged in North Korea? Yes, uh, Grady, you're right. Uh, North Korea has not made any official statement on the proposed summit. Uh, I read an interesting uh, dispatch, uh, you know, uh, issued from Pyongyang on Tuesday through KCNA, their uh, official state media. It's English version uh, now saying that uh, there is a sign of a change. I'm very careful about the wording here. Sign of a change in uh, relations with the U.S. is appearing. So I think I think they're sort of trying to slowly moving toward that the big announcement. But I think Kim Jong-un is uh, waiting for the perfect moment so that he can have the, uh, his own way to announce the uh, news. All right, it's a heavily controlled media, obviously, in DPRK North Korea. Uh, are you able to read what's written in Korean? And is that the same sentiment as to what's being released in, in English? Excellent question. Uh, it is often the case that, that there is a sort of a difference in nuance and uh, sometimes, you know, different even vocabularies uh, if you compare those two versions. But I don't think that there's much uh, difference in this particular case because this is such a matter that... Uh, you know, the dear leader himself is heavily involved in, and he claims uh, to be the mastermind of the whole thing. So uh, I have to double check, but uh, I, I'll be very surprised to see any major difference between Korean version of KCNA and the English version of Connie, you cover this uh, for us here at VOA, everything uh, uh, Korean, uh, but you also grew up there. And many, I, met, I imagine many of your friends, uh, their grandparents may have been uh, come from North Korea and may have relatives there. Um, but this is several generations since the armistice was signed in 1953. Does, is your generation still paying you know, wall to wall attention to North Korea? Well, I think uh, most of the South Korean people right now are definitely immune to the North Korean threat because we've been living under the North Korean nuclear threat for about 60 years now. And um, we've been under the threat of North Korea because their artillery can reach the South Korean soil. And I think um, it's business as usual for South Koreans. But the reason why the North Korean nuclear threat has become such an imminent issue right now is because of, of, North, Korea's, of North Korea's voice that, they, that they're capable of hitting the U.S. mainland now. All right. Um, Ab, um, let me um, ask you about a Twitter comment. Uh, we've, we have viewers who... Uh, who uh, tweet us all the time. Yasser Afghan says, what could be a potential rationale 
for the world's most isolated country to change its stance overnight, to come to a negotiation table with its sworn enemy, that of course would be the United States. I mean, what in the world happened that with all the saber rattling and all the insults going back and forth between the President of the United States and Kim Jong-un, what's changed that now he seems to want to talk? Uh, that's another excellent question. Remember when uh, Kim Jong-un delivered his New Year's speech uh, on the nuclear issue, there has not been much change. Uh, actually, if you look at the wording carefully, I think he said that uh, they're going to move on to the mass production of nuclear weapons, separate from signs of a thaw with the South Korea, you know, uh, try to you know, have some type of recon reconciliations with the South Korea. He was very clear about his position on the nuclear issue. Now it's been only, what, uh, three months or so? And uh, in May, uh, President Trump is supposed to meet with uh, Kim Jong-un. So I think there is a lot uh, mm -hmm. to be sorted out and a lot that the Trump, President Trump needs to find out when he meets with uh, Kim Jong-un. Connie, um, have the sanctions imposed by the United Nations have, mm -hmm. have they had an impact inside North Korea? Could that have some contributing factor the, to the fact that to, at least this is the first time we see Kim Jong-un reaching out to the United States? I think sanctions are definitely taking a hit on North Korea, and I think that's what made Kim Jong-un come up um, and say that he wants to have talks with uh, President Donald Trump. Um, well, they've been hit with the most strongest sanctions from the United Nations. And, and, and as Dong said, if we look at the, uh, Kim Jong-un's New Year's speech, he's extending an olive branch to South Korea, but at the same time, he's threatening the U.S. that he has a nuclear button on his desk, which is he's probably wanting to make that rift between the two allies and get an ease of sanctions. Well, it's by divide and conquer, too. You yes. know, cozy up to South, uh, South Korea and uh, perhaps, you know, in his thinking, draw a wedge. Now, it was reported today in the, um, the, the recently that, um, that uh, South Korea wants to be part of the summit. Exactly. Um, I, mean, do you, I mean, do you expect that? Well, President Moon's comments came from an inter-Korean summit preparatory committee, and he said, um, depending, well, he said if the U.S.-North Korea summit happens in Panmunjom at the Truce Village um, in the demilitarized zone, it could be possible for, um, for South Korea to join uh, the trilateral summit. Um, but again, it depends on how South Korea and North Korea Let me, let me just make a one quick point to uh, what uh, Connie just said. Yes, uh, you know, Trump made a lot of efforts to put the maximum pressure uh, on North Korea, and it is a big part of uh, North Korea's uh, possible change of attitude. Now, we sort of ignore the fact that uh, while Trump is putting a lot of pressure on North Korea, at the same time, he always left the room for dialogue. What's the evidence? Well, if you compare to the uh, previous administration, Obama administration, uh, Obama administration has been maintaining that, uh, you know, we are asking the North Korean regime to denuclearize, but we have no intention of, uh, you know, seeking a uh, regime change in North Korea. That's all they could say. Now, this administration, uh, that's what is called as a four no's. Uh, they're major principles in dealing with North Korea, and they are. They are not seeking a regime change in North Korea. Furthermore, they are not seeking a collapse of the regime. They are not seeking accelerated unification of the peninsula. They are not seeking any excuse to send the uh, U.S. military north of the you know, 30th parallel. I mean, to me, it's really, really uh, accommodating to the North Korean point of view. So we always have to remember, I mean, putting pressure on North Korea is one thing, but at the same time, Trump administration putting a lot of efforts for dialogue, too. Can you, all the, con all the attention seems to be on nuclear weapons, but as you noted, that they have all those artillery weapons that can reach Seoul that they've got on the southern border of North Korea, but they've also got some sort of chemical biological weapon program. We know that after what happened to Kim Jong-nam, the half-brother Kim mm -hmm. Jong-un. Is there any focus on the, the possibility of, you know, biological, chemical, and, and discussion about uh, artillery in this summit on nuclear weapons? Well, I don't know what what uh, what's going to what specific agendas are going to be on the um, agenda for the inter-Korean summit. But uh, we know that denuclearization of the North of the North Korean regime is definitely on this um, uh, on the table. But um, in terms of use of its biological weapons, um, that's also been a very concerning uh, sentiment among the South Korean public. But I think we haven't uh, we haven't reached too far enough to talk about that issue yet. But I'm pretty sure that they will discuss a, a broad range of issues well, when it comes to There's a lot to talk about among these three countries. Anyway, thank you both very much.
Okay, Steve, what is the latest on this anticipated summit uh, between the United States and North Korea, and maybe even including South Korea? Well, what there has been in Finland, of all places, an unofficial meeting uh, involving a couple of uh, former U.S. ambassadors to South Korea, and they met not only with the South Koreans there, but with the North Koreans as well. And these are sort of unofficial talks, perhaps, about having official talks to then set up the summit. So we're a long way, Greta, from, from getting to the summit. We yet don't even know uh, where or when. All right. Well, that was sort of the interesting part is that President Trump had said that it was going to happen before May 1st. Is that just an impossibility at this point? Well, in this uh, White House, nothing is impossible. Uh, they pull out all kinds of surprises, and uh, usually if uh, the president says jump, people will have to say here, how high? So not impossible, but it is really looking unlikely considering uh, we're getting into late March, uh, and there's just no uh, agreement as far as we can tell uh, about where to hold the summit, and that is as big a question as anything else.